a presentation from Avinash and Avinit who are going to talk about ARM-based SOC verification. Um, Avinash has worked on SOC and IP level verification for around seven years. Um, has worked previously for Wipro, Prescale, GDA, and Simplicity Software, and is currently working at TBS. Ebonite worked on uh, SOC and IP level verification for around six years. Um, previously, MT, Infotex, Eskin, and Teleprop Technologies, um, and currently with TBS as a senior verification engineer. And they're going to talk about ARM based SOC verification. Hello, everybody. My name is Avnis, along with uh, Avnit. So here we are just giving the like uh, overview of the on base SOC verification. So like uh, this thing we learn like uh, doing the verification with the uh, different customers to their on base SOC. So there is like we are discussing what are the main system level challenge we are facing in the SOC verification. Then like what are the methodologies are there to do the uh, verification. Then some basic uh, test and construction. That's it. So these are the like uh, highest potential area in SOC verification. So generally, like uh, first point is like uh, unexpected access conflict between the shared resource. So like in SOC, we are using the light uh, lock uh, common uh, shared resources. So when we are like uh, say that in the multi-core SOC, so the like uh, how the like uh, say that same IP is accessed by the like uh, multiple core at a time. So how we to avoid those things? So so like these are the one the issues now we are using the semaphores are like something which can be blocked like at a time to use a particular IP at a, at a moment. And then uh, like uh, uh, this thing, third IP uh, integration. So like in the third IP integration, like uh, we have to be very carefully choose like uh, this thing IP, like what they have the like interconnect, uh, how they have doing the interconnect and or what is their logger mechanism and uh, what is there, like, uh, say that uh, whole architecture. Because, like, uh, in SOC, if you have the, uh, we have the different, different third-party uh, third IP, and uh, they have every, like, every IP have there, they design with their own standalone environment. But when we are integrating with, uh, like, in the common platform, so, like, uh, a general, uh, like, uh, guidelines should be there to adopt those things. If you are not adopting those things, like, we have, when we are doing the debug particular IP, like one IP have their own way to do all those things. Another IP have their own way to do all those things. It creates the, like sometimes like it takes a lot of time to doing the debugging. So this is the there. Then the cache coherency in the multi-core system. Cache coherency is like a, one of the like major issues now in coming the multi-core system. So now in the ARM is uh, in the AXI4, they are just supporting the, this thing cache coherency. So like in cache coherency, how this thing like uh, like local shared data, how we can be like uh, can be up to date in the all the system. That is uh, like uh, one of the things in cache coherency. Then uh, this thing interconnectivity, their priorities came. Then uh, like uh, arbitration deadlock and their uh, like priorities case sequence. Then the uh, second thing is uh, like a hardware software sequencing. Now like in the core simulation environment, we are like. Uh, Parallelly, we are doing the uh, like uh, software environment and the hardware environment. So it is uh, like uh, just giving the like uh, say that uh, like uh, flexibility to both the software engineer, hardware engineer to understand the each other, like each other's sequences. So it's like uh, generally what happens like uh, first the RTL is that come in the picture, then software is running on that. So they are not uh, able to trace down the like actual the functionality of the hardware. So if you're doing the parallel those things, we can be trace out the like if any sequencing issues are there or not. Then exception handling priority scheme, power domain. This is another uh, like issue in SOC verification. Earlier we are doing like in the say that in IP verification, we are doing the like uh, complete IP level verification. But when we are doing the SOC level, we have to see like uh, like uh, say the functional path. We are looking the power based on the functional path. Because IP level, we know say, it is consuming this much power. But uh, in the real scenario, at a time, one or two applications running on that. So that particular application, how the taking the power, all those things, we have to take care of this thing. We have to, like when we are doing the power analysis, we have to see those parts also there. Then reset and clock reason. Then this is a, like a, one of the common ARM architecture. So here is a, like a ARM core, multiple ARM core. And then here is a, like uh, high-speed peripherals, low-speed peripherals, 
all the memory interconnectivity and uh, this thing boot sequence timer all those two like uh, in the IP. So in ARM verification we have a lot of methodologies. Uh, right now we are just discussing here like what we use in the like uh, formal verification, post verification, FPGA prototyping. So the formal uh, verification take care by Amni. Hi. So I'm going to discuss about formal verification. So the formal verification basically is a systematic process that uses the mathematical uh, reasoning to verify the design. Apart from that, uh, formal verification basically works algorithmically and exhaustively to explore all the uh, possible input combination. And uh, sometimes we it is uh, very difficult to figure out how to uh, stimulate our design and how to capture all the scenarios. So to do that, to do that, formal verification will come to the picture. So this is the typical uh, formal verification flow in which we have ARM core and uh, <coughs> ARM interconnect and there are several IPs are there in an SOC. So to do a formal verification, so let's take an example of uh, AXI protocol in which uh, um, master side is connected towards the ARM port and the slave side will be connected towards the uh, IA, slave side port. So in the two ways we can verify, uh, one is the protocol checking and other, another one is the uh, scoreboard checking. In scoreboard we'll do integrity and data check, connectivity path check verification. And in model checking, basically from the master side, we'll have some assertions. So with that, we can have a protocol verification. And on the scoreboard side, we can have a, a integrity and connectivity check. So this is the technique, basically, we use to verify an AXI protocol, in which we have to first construct the CSV file that describes the, all the registers. And then we have to run the uh, script to generate the system relog assertion and then we have to find the proof kit on the both the sides of the DUT from the master side and as well as the slave side and then we can run the uh, tool and uh, by using that uh, uh, engine and uh, at the last we'll prove and analyze the tool results and log. So let's say, so let's say if in, in AXI we have to do some uh, property check. So first we have to come up like, uh, we have to decide how many what kind of assertions we are going to check. And uh, apart from that, uh, uh, let's take one example of property in which uh, if AR valid has occurred, and then in the after few cycles, R valid should come into the picture. So uh, this is basically check the property in the same way we can check the other properties. And uh, for the connectivity and integrity check, uh, I can take you an example. I mean, let's say we have in our SOC, we have a cortex boundary and another we and the output we have SOC boundary. So input side we can bind the cortex clock and output we can on the SOC boundary we can bind the uh, SOC clock and for the validity check uh, from the input side we have AW ready and AW valid and uh, on the output side we can have a SOC uh, AW valid and AW ready and then from that we can run the formal tool and we can check the connectivity and integrity check. So there are few limitations of the formula, like uh, you said, it is size limit and uh, it's not always feasible. It's basically good for the control checking, but not for the data. So this is all about the formal. The rest of the things has been discussed by Amish. So apart from the formal verification, uh, we are discussing of the code simulation. So the core simulation is basically is like uh, is giving the like a flexibility to both to the software engineer and the hardware engineer to understand the like each other's like features like common uh, verification for a features. So these are the some points like which is uh, which are the like giving the like uh, advantage in the core verification. So it's giving the like uh, if the both the engineer software engineer and the hardware engineer together verifying a particular uh, like RTL. So it is giving the more success rate at a first time. And uh, even is also as a like a hardware side, when we are doing the like we have the software environment, we have the hardware environment. So it's giving us the more stimulus in uh, stimulus to understand the debug things. Like uh, sometimes in the software we are getting something and when we don't have the common environment, we didn't uh, go for that particular, we have to create the scenarios for that. 
and then we are getting the stimulus and then we have go to debug. In the common environment, if the software getting some in, uh, software side, we are getting some issues. We are getting the stimulus for that, and we can be verified that. So same thing for the like a software engineer also. He can be understand the hardware more well as a time of the when it's going to be integrated. So these are this is are some uh, common uh, flow uh, for the software and the hardware co simulation. So like uh, now uh, from the ADA vendors, we are getting the like uh, software tools like. Uh, Compiler, linker, debugger. So, like using like a C and C++ assembly, we can be write the particular functionality or all those. We generate executables. These executables will be load in the memory model. Now we also getting the some debugger tools also, like ARM also. We are getting the uh, like a core site and uh, apart from that we are getting the interface to the all those uh, this thing debugging. So these will be uh, uh, load in the your duty. And uh, after that, uh, using the stimulus uh, tool, we can be verify those particular features. So this is a like a common verification flow. And uh, after that, we are discussing the FPGA prototyping. So uh, FPGA prototyping, as like in the SOC verification, is help to do the like a faster simulation. But it also, it's like have the some limitation also there as well as. So in the faster simulation, when we are doing, going to verify very uh, like complex feature, like where more than two or three IPs involved at a moment. So that time the simulation is very slow. So we have the some environment make this thing faster. So that pair FPGAs help to us to like uh, FPG prototyping help to identifying those things. So they are giving this thing uh, like. Uh, Comprehensive verification integrates hardware software testing also. It helps in that uh, manner also. Like uh, at a time, both the software and hardware will be run and the same movement in real time. So we can be uh, understand like what is happening. And uh, then this thing. So that using data cable, we can be debug the like uh, hardware very well. So this is a uh, like uh, common emulation environment which are using in the uh, like uh, uh, ARM-based SOC verification. So ARM actually providing their emulation board. Uh, like uh, when we are using any ARM processor, they are providing their emulation board to uh, like uh, do the FPGA prototyping. So here we are using our uh, synthesizable uh, this thing hardware uh, design and this thing BFM, and then we are using socket interconnect. We are like uh, doing all the read and write and this, and we are running some C test case on that, and we are interacting with the software and checking the all the functionality. So these are the limitations in the FPGA prototyping. So basically, like FPGA prototyping, the problem is like a partition. As the like complexity is increasing, how we are going to be uh, like partition between the like uh, like more than one FPGA, and uh, like uh, then how we are distributing the this thing clock tree and like multi uh, clock domain. How we are going to distribute clock reason and uh, this thing reset reason. And the second thing, like uh, we are taking the like uh, environment from the different different vendor. So like uh, synthesizable, uh, all those modules also is an issue in the FPGA. Like our all the RTLs should be FPGA compliant to do the like FPGA prototyping. And uh, also in the FPGA uh, uh, prototyping, like debug also is a problem. Like uh, we have to do the lot of multiple iteration to the like catch particular Like uh, we have the limited debug capability there in the FPGA. So we have to do multiple times same things to catch the issues particular time. So this is a, like a limitation in the FPGA prototyping, and uh, this is the one uh, like a common test bench uh, construction in the ARM based SOC. So we here we have the ARM core, and uh, here we have the duty, like where we all the IPs will be there. Then in the TV, we have used the TV configuration. Because in the SOC verification, we are generally, like uh, we use the, this project from the like long term from multiple versions. So TV configuration helps to lot to understand like uh, how to this uh, environment going to behave. If you have the like uh, very constant like things there, uh, so it will be help, like uh, give the restriction. So like uh, TV configuration, how this thing, how many channels we are going, how number of packets, all those things. It will be help all the TV configuration. Then like uh, how your BFM component is there, it's like active BFM component or passive uh, components. Based on the IP, we are choose the like what component is required for that. So this is the like uh, there.
So here is a conclusion for the uh, SOC verification. So as like uh, we say that uh, complexity is growing, so we have to use the multiple verification methodologies to achieve those particular results. Because like using the one uh, like uh, verification, it's not easy possible. Uh, so we have to use the multiple uh, like uh, environment to achieve those particular uh, like uh, complete SOC verification. So this is the overall. Do we have any questions before we move on? Any questions from the audience on the paper? No. Okay, so thank you very much, Lavinish and um, Evan, uh, Evanash and Ebony. Thank you.